Welcome to Not Starving Artists, the podcast. I'm your host, Brooke Benson, money coach and equity actor. I am your financial cheerleader, here to help you build your financial confidence and have power over your money. The best part, no budgeting or bi-weekly paychecks required. I went from being a broke BFA grad having weekly panic attacks about money to a financially confident, wealth-building actor and business owner. Money gets to feel fun, simple, and sexy, and I am going to show you how. Hey everyone, welcome to my brand new podcast series, Inside One-on-One Coaching, where I'm giving you an inside look on what a private money coaching call is actually like, and to show you how much can shift for you from just one single coaching session. These episodes are real one-on-one coaching calls. Some are with current and past clients, and some are people I've never coached before, and everyone has given permission for these calls to be shared with you here. A full one-on-one coaching package is three months long with weekly coaching sessions, unlimited text and voice voice messaging support with me, and access to the full video curriculum from my signature group coaching program, Cashed Up Creatives. One-on-one coaching is for creatives, business owners, and those of you whose brains just have a hard time following traditional money advice. You'll get personalized strategy and support to help you understand your numbers without a spreadsheet, fully fund your savings, invest your first $1,000, spend money guilt-free, and finally build a relationship with money that feels easy and supportive. The investment for this package is $4,000 or three monthly payments of $1,400. You can book a sales call with me to learn more about one-on-one coaching and what that would look like for you and the link is in the show notes. Let's get to it. Hi, Coral. It's so lovely to meet you. You too. How are you doing? I'm doing good. How are you doing today? I'm good. I'm doing good. Um, I just got back from traveling from Texas. I worked there this summer. So yeah, back at home. <laughs> wow. And where is home for you again? Oklahoma. Oklahoma. Okay. Amazing. What were you doing in Texas? Um, sorry, there's a fly. Um, <laughs> I was doing um, my first theater contract. Um, what was so, the show? Uh, Fancy Nancy the Musical. Oh my gosh, how fun. So fun. Oh my gosh, and so sparkly. <laughs> yes, that's amazing. What a fun summer. Okay, so back in Oklahoma. Um, so to start, Coral, as we dive into coaching, tell me a little bit more about you, who you are, what your goals are, what your vibe is, and then we'll dive into what you want coaching on today. Uh, for sure, for sure. So um, I'm kind of starting from the bare basics because I just graduated. I am still living with my parents, but that is something that is like first of the list to do, work on saving up to move out, you know? Mm-hmm. Uh, so yeah, and actually pursuing the life that I want to pursue. For yeah. sure. So, so let's just start talking strategy. Is this where you want coaching on today? I'm assuming that this is, this is the focus for today. Yes, for sure. Amazing. So let's talk about moving out. Okay. Do you want to move out and stay in Oklahoma or are you moving to a different state city? Yeah. Um, so I am thinking about Houston, Texas. Cool. Okay. Um, amazing. Houston, Texas. So Let's talk numbers because when it comes to making a shift like that, changing lifestyle and like, right, getting your money shit together, we want to ground it in like, what do these things cost? Where am I at? And then what's the gap I need to fill, right? So that's just math, right? We're just going to discover the math. So right now, do you know your current numbers, right? Of what it costs to live as you and what you're currently making, even though I know your income has shifted a little bit. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Um, so I know that last year I was not good. Um, I made, um, $9,000 last year. Mm -hmm. Um, and so I did not qualify to pay taxes, obviously, Mm -hmm. (laughs) um, but that was also working half of the year. So right now, um, I am, yeah, so it's not there quite yet. It is. Yeah. Uh, Wait, can I, can we clock something real quick? Uh, why, when you said $9,000, why did you say that's not good? Well, it's not really livable. You know Uh what I mean? Sure. Uh, That's different. Okay. It's not livable in Houston on your own, but it's fully livable with the life you were living last year, having only worked half of the year. 
You know what? That's a good point. That is a good point. <laughs> yeah. So I'm I'm pulling that out because it's so important to clock how you're speaking to yourself about money and how you're speaking about your money. So the thought that's going through your head about last year was $9,000. That is not good. We need to shift some, some shit this year. And like, we're not going to be able to live. That's a really scary, hard thing to be thinking to yourself rather than $9,000 where I'm going is living alone or with a roommate, but like out of my parents' house in Houston as an artist, $9,000 is not going to be livable in that situation. So what do I need to do this year? And what is it going to cost me to live in Houston? Do you see how that's so much more neutral and tactical? It is so neutral and tactical. Yeah. yeah. And it's about to like not having shame about what you created last year, because if you're still here living and breathing, like you, it, you're fine. You $9,000 worked for you last year. You might want to make different decisions moving forward, but $9,000 worked for you last year. Let's not be mad about it. I mean, I was able to live and only make $9,000 last year. That's awesome. Yeah, you're right. You're right. <laughs> cool. And now you're like, okay, now I have some bigger dreams. So I'm going to make more money. But like, how cool that I lived on $9,000 last year. Yes, for sure. For sure. What's coming up as I say that? Yeah, that's, that's some relief, I would say, because I noticed that I had such a bad and I know that's part of like what you like to do too. I had such a bad mindset about money. Um, and like, even while I was in Houston, like I did have a budget, but it was very strict. And I was living off of a stipend. And at the end, because I had some extra money in my bank account, um, my therapist was like, girl, just pour into yourself, take care of yourself. Because a lot happened. There was a hurricane and all that jazz. Oh and so I was like, you know what? I know this will like run out, but I'm going to pour into myself financially and do stuff to take care of myself. You know, like maybe I'll go get my nails done. Maybe I'll get a little treat right here. And so that's why I was kind of like, whenever I saw you were doing the free coaching, I was like, you know what? I should do that as well. So I can learn better about this type of stuff and have room to do stuff like that. Yeah, so, that's so yeah. great. So cool. Okay. So like remembering that little nugget as we continue to move forward. So that's where you're at. Now let's talk about Houston. Have you looked into, when did you get back, by the way? Is this like very fresh? You getting back from Texas? Like last night at 10 o'clock. Oh my God. Okay. So you are fresh off of Texas. Okay, cool. Literally, literally fresh. Cool. So let's talk about like action plans moving forward of how you're going to prep for this, this Houston move. Have you looked into what an apartment would cost in Houston? Are you planning on living alone? Are you moving with someone? Do you see a roommate situation happening? What's your game plan as of right now? Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, I have one person that I could possibly move in with, but I don't know what she's wanting to do. Sure. Um, so a roommate would be ideal, but other than that, she's really my only option. Um, I was, whenever I talked with people, um, I know like a good, a good, pretty good apartment the average with like utilities and all that is three thousand okay yeah oh cool and three thousand uh split between two people or three thousand just for you uh three thousand split in between two people okay cool yeah so let's let's start there because that seems like the most likely scenario that you're gonna end up in or that you're going to want. But if that changes, just know all you have to do is plug in 3000 instead of 1500. Okay. Right. So it's just the math. So we'll start with 1500. Um, and then let's, so what we're doing here is we're going to literally put a dollar amount towards the lifestyle you're striving for. So 1500 a month is your rent, right. And utilities and things like that. How much would you say you would estimate you'd spend in a month down in Houston on like food, groceries, shopping, et cetera. Mm -hmm. I would say probably like, uh, 600, 600 sure. from cool. there. Amazing. Well, that that's including gas. So maybe more like 300, 400. Cool. Well, let's include gas. Like let's include all of the things you're going to spend money on. So great. Um, so plus 600 and then you have your car. So like car maintenance, car insurance, those sorts of things. 
included as well. So I'm going to say like, if we're, I want you to find these numbers. This is, this is your piece of homework. I want you to literally go through, list out your expenses, what it would cost to live in Houston to the best of your ability, right? What you could estimate, but we're just going to play with the total number being 3000, right? So let's just play with that. So 3000 is the monthly income number, average monthly income number that you are going to be striving for. Okay. What comes up with that number? Um, can you clarify that just a little bit more? Sure. So to make the move to Houston, right? You are going to need to make at least $3,000 a month on average in order to sustain a life in Houston, right? To be able to pay your rent, pay your bills, have groceries, put a little into savings and investments. This is like your initial baseline number of what you need to survive in this new lifestyle right now. Or like if we're basing it off of last year, if we divide 9,000 by 12, that's about $750 a month, right? So moving forward, needing at least $3,000 a month. That being said too, with fluctuating income, with artistic income, you might have, what was your, what was your stipend for Fancy Nancy? Um, it was around $3,000. Cool. 3,000. Um, so, and again, I don't know exactly what you spent. I'm just going to use this as an example. Uh, no, for sure. You were put up in housing and things like that. You were like given your living, living expenses or no? I was not, but I stayed with a host family, so I didn't have to pay. <laughs> Great. Okay, cool. So let's say then you only spent $500 a month to like eat and live like while you were on contract. Okay. And you were there for three months. Cool. Well, two and a half months. Two and a half months. Let's do three for the ease of numbers. So 300 or uh, 500 times three is 1500, which means you would have $1,500 left over from this contract to put towards your in-between time, right? Like this month in between now, like Fancy Nancy and your next contract. So with fluctuating income, that's how it works. It's like, you're gonna live your same lifestyle when you're on contract, put the rest into your savings so that when you're off contract, you still have money to sustain your lifestyle. Yeah, so that makes sense. Great. So when I say on average $3,000 a month, it doesn't mean Every single month has to be exactly $3,000. You need to find some sort of W-2 income that gives you $3,000. That's not what we're talking about. I'm saying just like in the math sense, you want to be averaging $3,000 a month. But like, let's say one month you make $5,000 and the next month you make $1,000. Great. You've made on average $3,000 a month because your $5,000 month, you'll spend $3,000, put $2,000 in your savings. So then the next month, you're making a thousand, but then you can pull two thousand from your savings to have three thousand. Okay. That Do you, does sense. that make sense? That does. That does. Cool. So, with that being said, what comes up when you think about making three thousand dollars a month on average in order to move to Houston? On average, three thousand. Um, it does sound good. It does sound good. Um, I am thinking though, that's just the apartment and the utilities itself. You know what I mean? Oh yeah. So we calculated in for, um, so 1500 was the amount we talked about for rent. If you're splitting, right. Okay. So, oh, all right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So I'm, I'm thinking 3000 total for everything, right? Your half of the rent, utilities, gas, groceries, food, all of that. We're averaging 3000. Your homework is to go get more specific numbers on what that actually is because we're just using averages right now okay that makes sense okay cool 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 less of an overwhelming number now <laughs> yeah cool so making three thousand dollars now let's go to like your teaching job and um kind of what you want your income to look like moving forward what comes up there for you when you think about bringing in three thousand a month and the ways you can bring in three thousand a month yeah. So, um, I, uh, I'm not teaching, well, I'm not teaching full-time anymore. Mm -hmm. Um, I, uh, my old boss, because I worked part-time at a library as well, my old boss, he reached out to me about, um, being interviewed for a higher paying position at the library. And so I did the math that's going to be about like one, 
1,100 something on average. Um, and that is the, um, that's basically what I was making before, but less hours. So I will be able to bring in more income, thank God. Mm -hmm. um, and then I will be, I do sing in a choir. I get paid for that. Um, and I do teach. Um, and that's like $15 for 30 minutes, uh, $30 for an hour. And right now I do have one voice student, but they're working on bringing in more. Um, so those are some things that I have right there. Um, looking into once I kind of recuperate from Texas, looking into um, possibly looking into some remote jobs to bring in more income that way. Um, some, some side hustles. I do nanny as well. And that pays really well. Um, and I'll have more time to do it because I'll have a, only a part time job. So that'll be great. That's amazing. Okay. So you have lots of different, uh, different avenues before you and that you can, that you can move forward in and start bringing in money. I want to talk about building up a savings account for your move fund specifically. So let's talk about that. But the one kind of blanket statement I want to say about income, which you're, you were already saying, but I want, I just think every single artist needs to have this in their brain. Anything less than $30 an hour is not worth your time. It is actually unlivable to do anything that's less than $30 an hour, right? Which used to feel like so much money, but it's literally not anymore. So $30 is the new baseline. So making $30 an hour from a voice student, exactly, right? And like, this isn't saying you have to quit anything that isn't $30 an hour, but if it's not, your focus is going to be on replacing it, right? With something else that is making more. And that's just a, a an overarching like generalization that I wanted th to throw out there as you're continuing to like look for remote jobs and things like that. Um, cool. Any, any thoughts on that before I move on to savings? I actually really appreciate that for sure. Cause that's another part of my assignment. Well, assignment for myself is not like doing things that are only $10 an hour or whatever. Cause that was just ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. Yeah. And it's going to drain you not only financially, but it's going to drain you emotionally and energetically. And it's going to keep you stuck because not only do you not have energy to then figure out how you're going to bring in more money, but your creative um, reservoir is going to get depleted, right? Because everything you're doing, it's you're, you're just sucked. You're drained. Yeah, For sure. hundred percent. Yeah. And like our society, you know, the government and minimum wage, all of that will tell you that $30, like you should be happy with $30, right? Because minimum wage is so much lower. But when we're thinking about how you actually need to live nowadays, especially if you're in a bigger city, right? Like Houston. Okay. It is so important for you to be making what your minimum wage is, which is $30 an hour, at least. Okay. So savings. I want you to start a savings account for your move. Okay. So we've got two different things when it comes to um, making a lifestyle shift, right? Like when you're graduating or when you're moving to a new city or when you're getting a new kind of job, the most important thing is that you're thinking about the income that you need to be consistently bringing in, and then the one-time savings account that you need in order to buffer your transition. So when I think about a big move, right? You moving to Houston requires an up level in your income to be able to support and sustain the lifestyle. And you are going to need a savings account that is separate from that for a moving truck, your flights down there, um, all of the costs that you incur, right? Like moving into a new place or even just, um, you know, you might be eating out for the first two weeks because you're not in the routine, like those sorts of costs that come up. You want a savings account for that move. Okay. Okay. So where are you banking currently? Uh, IBC bank. Cool. Do you have a checking and a savings account? So, um, whenever I started it, I was a teenager and uh -huh. my parents were afraid of me overdrafting. <laughs> so I had, they're both checking, but one is savings, but I want to start an actual savings account so that, you know. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Amazing. Here's another task for you. I okay. want you to open new bank accounts at a different bank that only you have access to. Yeah. And I do only have access to that. Oh, cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just started when it started it whenever I was 18 and didn't know anything. Um, and so they were like, well, 
just in case you overdraft. We don't, you know, we don't want you to, you know, get into a financial situation, but thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah, sure. So, uh, do you, let me, let me pause here. Are you, are there overdraft fees and fees you're paying to have those bank accounts open? No, no, I've, I've never overdrafted or anything like that. Cool. It, a savings account though, are there fees for having a savings account there? Oh, wait. Okay. Now I remember it was that if you didn't have, it was either that if you didn't have a specific amount of money in your savings account or that you were below a certain number, I think, I think then you had to pay an extra fee. Right. I think as the first one, okay. but beyond that. Sure. That sounds right. That tracks with a bank like that, that they would charge a fee, like a monthly maintenance fee if you go below a certain amount or whatever it is, uh, which is why I want you to move banks. So I'm going to I'm gonna give you some podcast episodes to listen to. There's two of them. Um, one is called The Lowdown on High Yield Savings Accounts. This is on my podcast, the Not Starving Artist podcast. It's on Spotify and Apple and YouTube, so you can listen to it wherever you you listen to your podcast. The lowdown on high yield savings accounts, and I believe it's like why you should switch banks. I can't remember exactly what it's called. Yes, why you should switch banks and how to do it stress free. One of the episodes is twenty one minutes. The other is twenty seven minutes. I want you to listen to both of those to eliminate some fear about switching banks or some resistance to switching banks. Is there any of that coming up for you right now? I would say so. Yeah. Just a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Why? Tell me more. I, I think it's just the change. Money in general just scares me because I feel like I don't know that much about it, but I'm also here to learn and it's okay not to know that much, you know, especially for my age. Cause I'm, I am 23 and I'm literally an emerging adult. You yes. know what I mean? So oh, it's okay to be there. And I can give myself grace for that. So. Oh my gosh, of course. Yes. And why I'm telling you to switch banks and why I feel so strongly about this for everyone who is still at the bank that they are at from their childhood, even if there's nothing like super wrong with your bank, most of the time, these banks that you had from childhood don't offer any interest for their savings accounts. So in the episode called The Lowdown on High Yield Savings, I talk about the interest rate of a high yield savings account where you could make $4 over the course of a year in your bank account you're at right now, or you could make, oh, I do the math in the episode. I'm actually not gonna do math right here without my numbers in front of me, but it's the difference between 0.4% and 4%, right? And that's a very big difference for your money sitting there doing nothing. So if just for that, where your savings are going to be sitting, moving banks is a huge plus. But then there's this like emotional mental side of it. Oh, and the other tactical thing is they don't charge overdraft fees. They don't charge account minimum fees, no monthly maintenance fees. Like there are so many banks that don't even have stipulations that you need to adhere to in order to not get fees. Like we don't need a bank like that. Emotionally and mindset wise, it's like graduating, right? From your childhood bank to your adult bank, right? Or starting your financial wellness journey or this new journey with your money in a clean slate, in a new apartment, in a new location. There's some baggage that gets whole, held with your childhood bank. Um, and so being able to have it for that reason. And then another reason is it's going to build your confidence that you're able to do something like that with your money. And it's going to create evidence of moving banks as low stakes. I can move money and the sky is not going to fall down. I am in control. I am a CEO of my dollars. Look at me moving them to a new bank. There's a confidence builder that comes from a small move like that. And it might not feel small right now, Five years from now, it's going to feel super small because you're going to be investing. You're going to be on your way. You're going to be like moving banks, easy peasy, right? But right now, this is the first step to then getting there. What's coming up for you on that? I have more confidence in doing that. It's still a little scary, sure. not gonna, but it, it does feel very motivating. It does. Good. So I'm glad to hear that and know that it might, you might 
feel that fear and that scaredness as you're making the move, right? And so being able to do the thing while feeling a little bit scared is also important as a confidence builder of like, oh, I know I can still do a thing even though I'm scared, right? Even though my body is like, no, what if it all disappears as it's going through the internet, right? Like that doesn't happen. Yeah. And that education, this is why I'm telling you to listen to those two podcast episodes, because I go much deeper into the education about banks and how they work and online banks and all that. So you're going to get that education, that knowledge, where you can actually point to the facts when your fear pipes up, where you're like, here's exactly why FDIC insurance protects my money from disappearing, even though I can't go into a physical bank location and pull out checks and talk to a teller. Like, here's why my money is safe. Or here's why opening a bank is super low stakes. And I could close it next week if I want to, and my money is safe. You're going to have the knowledge and the facts to quell the fear. Good, 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 good. That's yes. good to know. Good. So once you move banks, I'm going to ally bank is one of my favorites. I'm not sponsored at all. I just use them personally. My clients use them. They're fantastic. I've talked to people on their marketing and their sales teams, love them, support them. Um, they have a feature inside of their savings account called buckets, which means you can have one savings account, but you're able to bucket your money visually where like, okay, I have, um, $9,000 set aside for my three months of bills when I first moved to Houston. So I know that no matter what, as I'm searching for that new job at the library, right? Because my librarian told me that like I could get a transfer. I don't know how libraries work in that respect. <laughs> Right. But like other things, or as I'm looking for a new teaching job, right. Or continuing to get students down in this new place. Uh, I have three months of bills set aside in this bucket called like Houston three months ahead on bills fund or whatever. And then you've got your bucket called moving fund where, you know, your moving truck is going to cost X amount. Your flight's going to cost X amount. And you have the money for the moving fund. And then you have a section for, you know, let's say a friend of yours is getting married and you're asked to be a bridesmaid and you need to buy the dress and there's a bachelorette and whatever. So you have that money set aside. You have car maintenance set aside in a bucket. So you're able to actually visualize your dollars and how prepared you are for the things that are coming up. Good. That's good. That feels very empowering actually. Good. Yeah. Tell me more on that. Why does it feel empowering? Yeah, for sure. Um, just because I've been uh, like, I see, I see the numbers in my bank account. Um, I haven't checked it in the past few weeks because I've just been scared to, um, but um, I see the numbers in my bank account, right? But it's not separated. And I've talked to people about this before. It's not separated. It's all just kind of like lumped together, you know? So it's like, I feel like I have money for this. I feel like it's going to be okay, but there's a little bit of that panic there. You know what I mean? And so having it categorized, I feel like is very empowering because like you were saying, it provides more evidence. Yes. And I don't know about that before. That's, that's just, wow. Crazy. <laughs> so Yeah, it's good. I'm glad you're having this epiphany. And, and when it's creating evidence too, like when we talk about mindset work and thought work, it's one thing to have all of your savings in one lump sum and you're feeling scared to spend some of it on the move. Right. But you're like in your journal and you're like, okay, I don't have to be afraid. I can, I'm abundant. I'm going to make more money. I can spend this and not feel scared. But yes. it's going to be so much easier to do that thought work if it's all sectioned out where you can be like, hey, brain, literally look that we have three months of bills for when we move to Houston. And also, it's not going to touch our emergency money for like those medical expenses that could come up. And also, we have the money to buy the flight and get the moving truck right there. Like you can talk to your brain with facts and evidence rather than just talking it through feelings. We love feelings. We love talking about feelings, but we want to have feelings based in facts, right? Rather than feel feelings just for feeling's sake. Does that make sense? Yeah, that makes perfect sense. Good. Okay. So you've got some homework. You've got some task lists. You've got some, some things to, to move forward on emotionally and also tactically. Any last questions, thoughts, feelings before we hop off today? This is all really, really good. Um, I did want to ask your opinion on uh, a side hustle that I have been doing. Mm -hmm. So I was, I was initially getting paid $16 an hour mm -hmm. um, by my mentor. I was working as a personal assistant for her and I've loved doing this so much. Um, and I also know that the mentor friend dynamic is something with that. So, and she, I actually know about you because of her. Mm. Um, 
Uh, yeah, but um, she uh, she had to go to Europe this year, and there was a very small miscommunication because I wanted to use some of my hours towards my training and voice lessons because that was something that was making me happy, you know, uh, and I enjoyed it, and it's training. But yeah, so um, there was just a miscommunication, and she thought I was asking to be paid in just lessons mm -hmm. and no longer being paid in money whenever it was supposed to be an either or thing. And she was like, I understand if you want to go somewhere else, but I felt like I was learning a lot from her about like how to market myself as an actor and a singer and all that. Um, I know that we talked about the $30 an hour thing, and that's only at most four to five hours a week at max. Mm -hmm. um, and it, I only come in if I feel like I can come in. You know, what are your opinions on an energy investment like that? moving forward, because I still get lessons from that, right? And that's still a part of my training, but at the same time, I want to use my energy wisely. Sure. You know what I mean? Yeah. Great question. So I would, there's always exceptions, right? Like you can set the standard as $30 an hour, but if this job is fueling you, you enjoy the environment and like, it's feeling good, right? And it's not feeling sticky. And especially if it's only four to five hours a week, great. Keep doing it. Focus on the other jobs and the other hours in your week and make those dominoes fall. At some point, this domino will fall as well, but let it be the last domino to fall. Does that make sense? Yeah, of course. I'm glad you asked that question. Thank you. I awesome. appreciate it. This makes me feel way more equipped. So thank you so much. <laughs> I'm so glad. That's always the goal. I hope you have a great rest of your week, Coral, and that you're able to rest and recuperate. My God. For sure. For sure. Have a good rest of your day. Thanks so much for tuning in. Come join me on Instagram for more on how to build a simple, sexy relationship with your money. My Instagram handle is at not starving artists. And if you want to dive deeper with me, head to the show notes to learn more about one-on-one -on -one coaching. If you love this episode, subscribe, leave a review and share it with a friend that you want to get rich with.